Council, uh, let's call the meeting to order. Uh, and before we do the Pledge of Allegiance, uh, 10 days ago was the 15th year from September 11. Uh, and uh, that was a, a, a pretty difficult time for a lot of people and remains a difficult time for a lot of people. Uh, I'm sure that while there were 3,000 people killed almost immediately, uh, they all had friends and relatives and brothers and sisters, and it mushrooms out tenfold, twentyfold, thirtyfold. So there's a lot of people who find a very difficult time on that anniversary. So as we say the Pledge of Allegiance today, let's uh, do it in remembrance of all those who suffered a loss on that day. So if you'd rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. A uh, roll call, please. Councilor Babine? Present. Councilor Rowan? Here. Councilor Katarina? Present. Councilor St. Clair? He, uh, here. Councilor Hayes? Here. Councilor Chiazzo? Here. Chairman Donovan? Present. Uh, general public comments, anyone wishing to comment on any matter of importance uh, may approach the podium if it is not on the uh, agenda already. Minutes of September 7, 2016, regular meeting. Can I have a motion, please? Move approval. Second. Uh, does anyone have any comment or correction concerning the minutes? All in favor? Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. Adjustments to the agenda? There are none. None. Uh, items to be signed are the treasurer warrants, which I will do later in the meeting, uh, which moves us to order number 16-56, public hearing and second reading on the proposed new ordinance, chapter 615, the town of Scarborough blasting ordinance. Uh, and I'll ask for an introduction by the town manager. Yes, thank you. Uh, I gave Chief Colonel of the night off. He's out every other night this week, so I figured uh, I could handle it this evening. This matter came uh, by w to you by way of the Ordinance Committee, uh, came forward uh, through the concerns of some residents, and thankfully those residents and industry professionals were helpful to the committee mm -hmm. in the drafting of this ordinance. Uh, this matter was passed uh, in first reading two weeks ago with a, an amendment that frankly should have been caught. It was mm -hmm. part of what the Ordinance Committee included in their action and I failed to ha include it in this draft. But nonetheless, I think it, it is correct in front of you now. This was a matter that we've been thinking about for quite a few years and we just needed the impetus uh, to move it forward and thankfully we've done that. Uh, so we're very pleased to present this to you. I know members of the Ordinance Committee are with you this evening and certainly can speak to it further if you like. Good. We'll uh, have public, uh, public hearing first. Uh, anyone wishing to address this matter, please approach the podium. Close the public hearing, and could I have a motion, please? Move approval. Second. Uh, and, Councillor, discussion. I'll look to the ordinance chair, please. Uh, yes, as uh, Counsel, uh, excuse me, Manager Hall um, explained, we uh, spent quite a bit of time, had a great discussion with members of the public and members of the industry as well as Chief Thurlow around uh, the parameters of this ordinance. And uh, I would recommend that it be passed as currently fixed or amended. Uh, Thank you. Other comments? This was uh, fully debated in the last uh, meeting and uh, seems to be strongly endorsed. So uh, all in favor? Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. Order 16-57, uh, public hearing and second reading on the proposed amendments to Chapter 1301, the General Assistance Ordinance, pursuant to Title 22, MRSA, Section 4305, Subsection 4. Uh, I'll ask uh, the town manager to introduce this matter. Yes, uh, annually, uh, the state of Maine directs us or advises us what the maximums are for general assistance program. This is the program that's uh, solely uh, operated, if you will, by from the state, although they do delegate the actual specific responsibility of meeting with clients and uh, finding them eligible or not uh, to the local level. So it's a bit maddening in that we seem to do all the work, but uh, we have no control over um, the, the sort of limits. So uh, I wish I could advise that you have some ability to modify these, but you really don't. 
and um, as an aside, I know Tody's looked uh, into whether we could have these simply be adopted uh, without your action, but uh, they do require an affirmative vote of council each time they're um, they're raised or modified somehow. So here we are back again. Uh, I'm pleased to answer any questions you might have. Well, so I'm, I'm just curious, what happens if we don't adopt them? <laughs> <laughs> you don't get any money. Mm -hmm. They get mad. <laughs> Well, there is a reimbursement program. I, I, I don't know for sure, but I suspect there could be some punitive uh, actions with withholding reimbursement. Other comments to questions of the town manager? They may withhold your paycheck. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, that would be tough. That would be tough. <laughs> Ouch. Uh, we'll uh, go to the public hearing, please. Uh, anyone wishing to speak to this, please approach the podium. I'll accept the motion. So moved. Second. Thank you. Uh, discussion. <coughs> uh, this is a pretty routine matter. Uh, we're obligated to uh, pass it, so I don't think there's too much to discuss. Uh, all in favor? Opposed? Unanimous. Thank you. Order 16-60, 7 p.m. public hearing and action on the renewal request for junkyard permits pursuant to Title 30-A. MRSA, Chapter 183, Goldstein Steel Company, Inc., located at 36 Running Hill Road, uh, A. Gagnon, or E. Perry Iron and Metal, located at Rigby Road, Scarborough Auto Parts, located at 40 Holmes Road, uh, and Speedway Auto, located at 343 Payne Road. Uh, anything to report on any of these? I, I did receive an email from the zoning administrator, and he said everyone was in compliance. Thank you. Uh, public hearing on this. Anyone wishing to address the council on this order, please approach the podium. Accept the motion. So moved. Second. Discussion. Yes, Chris. <clears throat> so uh, is there any environmental impacts or regulations that accompany this, or is that a separate state-enforced Regulation. It would be a separate state. Separate state. Okay. Thank you. Other questions or comments? All in favor? Opposed? Unanimous. Thank you. Old business, none at this time. New business. Order number 16 61, first reading, and schedule a public hearing and second reading on the proposed amendments to Chapter 1002, this Town of Scarborough Shellfish Ordinance, Section 5. Licensing D conservation activities. Uh, town manager or Peter, which would you do? Would you like to? I'm pleased to, but by do, all means, if you do an introduction to this. Is this it? Either or. or. <laughs> go ahead. Well, you can, you can, oh, go I, right ahead. If I boot it, you can kick in. Fair enough. <laughs> no, we'll tag team. Got it. your back. Um, I think this came up, and it, it actually it was a really good discussion. And this is that you know, in order to have your license, the the shellfish clamors and it, they need to do a certain amount of conservative hours during the year. This really came up this summer as folks had scheduled some time, they showed up to do the work out on the water and there was just a, a, a thunderstorm that they saw, there was lightning over the water and so the person that was in charge of it really felt it was unsafe to put people out on the water under those conditions. And what this is really trying to address is for those that took time to be there, they actually show up and sign in. If, if it is unsafe because of weather, they would still like to get those participants to get their hours, which, which I think was a fair, it was a very healthy conversation about the pros and cons, but it was a really well thought out piece, and I think it's a, it's a fair thing to do. And I don't know, Tom, does that kind of okay, capture that? Perfectly well, yes, better than I. So I would really support their, their amendment to doing this. Uh, Councilor Katerina. Um, just to explain to people why this did not go to ordinance, um, it was uh, passed to me and, and asked what my thoughts were and I couldn't agree more than with what Councilor Hayes was. I don't see this as a substantive change to any ordinance, it's really common sense. So I, I would encourage the Council to pass this. I'll accept the motion. So moved. Second. Thank you. Councilor Discussion. That's a Roman. Uh, so <coughs> I, I think I support it, um, but I just wondered if we if we wanted to clarify it. I didn't see anywhere where it mentioned any definition of what the project the project 
leader. It's just kind of there in caps, and I didn't know if that could be construed as confusing, um, or if we just wanted to clarify it or not. I believe as a matter of practice, they designate a project leader for all conservation projects, and that project leader will cycle in and out, so it's not always the same person. In fact, it almost never is. So uh, I don't know how we could be more specific than that, but I think they know perfectly well yeah, what that means. So as in, well their, in their culture, the project, okay. there's, there's a designated person for that particular project, whatever it is, that's responsible for convening them, for getting the work done, for doing the paperwork and all that type right. of thing. So I think for them, it's pretty clear to who who would have the authority to say it's just not safe to be out on the water. Great. Councilor Kettering. Uh, I was just going to add to that. I didn't know if it was defined somewhere else in that ordinance. That's why I was just going to ask that. But don't worry about it because that's a good answer. Other comments? Uh, all in favor? Opposed? Unanimous. Thank you, everyone. Non-action items. None? None. Uh, standing and special committee reports and liaison reports. Let's start down with Chris. That's the case. <clears throat> so uh, energy met this morning. A um, couple things to report out uh, first. Um, the curbside recycling program is, is um, starting to get kicked off a little bit. They're starting to refine that a little bit more. Looks like we're looking at a start date sometime in January or February, <laughs> if possible. Um, we've got some outreach to do and some, some details to, to, to iron out before then. Um, but the neighborhood has been selected. Um, the Brown Homes neighborhood, which I think is uh, off Pleasant Hill, is that? And this is the pilot program. This is the pilot program, yes. Thank you for the clarification. Yeah, this is the pilot only program. We're looking at uh, probably about 180 homes to kick it off um, with an, an educational uh, outreach effort first to, to really highlight what the, uh, uh, what the program is going to be for, the, the limitations, the restrictions, that kind of stuff, how it's going to operate. Those details still need to be worked out, um, certainly between um, uh, the town and, uh, and Ecomaine. So that process continues. Um, and then uh, the other thing that was mentioned at the uh, Energy Committee meeting was that the annual recycling open house for Ecomaine is uh, this Saturday, September 24th from 8 to 11 at uh, 62 Blueberry Road off of I-95 exit 46. And uh, if you guys have never, or if any of the family or public has never been there, it's a great opportunity for even the kids to go out and kind of see the process, how it works, um, how they do their recycling efforts, and uh, look at some of the big machinery and that kind of stuff. And it's, it's a good, um, certainly if you've never been, I'd, I'd recommend going and seeing it at least once. Um, and then education uh, met on September 15th. They um, went over their, their goals. It was a workshop session for them. They, they uh, went through the goal workshop. I don't know if those have been finalized yet, but I'm sure we'll see them uh, once they are completed. And uh, there's also going to be a job fair for uh, those interested in being substitutes for uh, Scarborough, Gorham, South Portland, or Westbrook schools. Uh, they'll be hosting a substitute job fair Saturday, October 1st from 9 to 11 at Husson University in Westbrook. Uh, so if you or someone you're, you know is interested in becoming a substitute in any or all of the districts, please plan to attend. They're looking for several types of substitutes including teachers, ed techs, school nutrition, custodians, nurses, bus drivers, and more. Um, there's a link on the town website to the school website and contact information is provided there as well. So, thank you. Councilor so Hayes. Yeah, it was a pretty busy month, actually. Um, so I'll start with sort of the rules and policy committee met the last time we were here. We, we had talked about some changes, the policies and other things. The other thing that we have been working with is working on a new formula for trying to determine what the council might be comfortable with using for the estimated real estate appraisals that we use to determine the tax rate during budget season. And both Will and Sean have done a lot of work. They've come up with a formula we will be coming to the next council meeting with a proposal which is really to maybe do similar to this year, use a methodology that kind of predicts sort of a conservative estimate of what the real estate assessment might be and one that's maybe more, more toward a reality of what we have seen. So the last couple of years, our traditional methods have sort of underestimated the values of the tax rate. So we're going to have a core. <coughs> and when we, so when we have the budget conversations, we can have a conversation about the, the, the proposed increase will be between these sort of quarters. So we'll share that with you. We'll bring it forward. We'd be glad, would love to get your input on it. So we'll, that's what we've been working on. 
Second thing we've talked about doing is, but it, but I think we're running out of time under, under this sort of council, but maybe the continuing work might be taking a look at some of the impact fees around town and whether they're appropriate or not appropriate, that type of thing. Um, the seniors did meet. They did elect a new slate of officers, but not everybody was present, so I'll announce those next time. Um, there was a update on the recreational facility that we had talked about for them, sort of the senior center, outside senior center, as, as reported out from community services. I guess there's a sort of study going on about the whole campus and where things fit and where that might fit into that sort of footprint. They did raise some concerns. I just hope this, you know, that study can be concluded so that they can maybe by spring have some you know, progress on, on what they want to do. So that, that was sort of a conversation. Um, on the Coastal Harbor, um, there are lots of things going on. There's, um, there was an announcement saying, I guess there's a lot of abandoned sort of wooden boats down along the beach, down in sort of the commercial area. The harbor master has put out a notice saying that unless someone comes forward, they're going to start moving some of the boats that haven't been touched all season sort of off the beach and, and put it in a place. But if anybody wants to speak up, they can come down and mark them and they won't move them. So that's kind of an update. Um, Harbor Master also shared that he's looking to change the, the equipment that he has to go from sort of a heavier boat that is a challenge to get up into some of the shallower parts of the river to a, a boat that's much more maneuverable and nimble. He doesn't think it has a budget impact, but we'll be able to kind of swap even. So that was a conversation. Um, he also reported to Harbor Master that our sharing or job sharing um, with Cape Elizabeth this summer has worked out really well, that it actually did, it, it didn't interfere with his ability to still perform the services needed for Scarborough, um, but was able to service Cape Elizabeth and actually it may have, it certainly didn't use more hours than anticipated. So that was sort of a good update. There was a lot of conversation about the marker on the rock down off the point of Ferry Beach that got taken out by a storm and the Coast Guards are reluctant to put back in, but people are really concerned about it. So there was conversations about that, conversations about bait barrels, but most importantly there was a lot of effort has been and they're very interested in trying to find down along the working waterfront and the piers down by the co-op, what's the right balance between everybody's interest of using those facilities, the, the commercial fishermen and now the people that want to use it for recreational purposes purposes and others, they, they have formed an ad hoc committee that's going to take a look at some of the parking issues down there as it relates to the commercial fishermen. They're worried about having enough space for them to get their trucks and rigs parked. Um, it takes up a lot more space than conventional cars, but that ad, ad hoc committee too will start to look at the right balance of uses down there and really try to find a way that everybody has access to the, to the waterfront. So those are some of the things going on for coastal water. Um, for the shellfish, they are going to elect a new slate of officers next time. That was kind of on the list. The other thing they talked about um, is, uh, and actually our last town council, well actually our town council meeting on the 17th, there was a really good presentation done at the Scarborough Library about what are all the risks to, to the clams and shellfish and the predators that are moving in. Um, Tom was good enough. It is captured on, it's about an hour and a half. It is captured. It's on, if you go to community TV on the Scarborough page, there's a video on demand, it's there. So for any anybody out there that's interested in seeing that, it's a really interesting piece. I think the conclusion is that there's so many predators now out there that's really impacting the productivity of the clam, clam flats that at least this piece of research is starting to suggest maybe moving to some type of ways to protect the clams, almost sort of, you know, agriculture, on the, you know, enclosing the clam flats and sort of a mesh screening. I guess productivity goes way up. So it's just a really interesting maybe a glimpse of what's going to be coming down the pathway for us in the future. Um, and I guess with that, um, that kind of concludes all the activities. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor St. Clair. Puts me to shame. Um, uh, I did two things I want to mention. One, um, the uh, uh, Temba La, I'm having brain trouble. Um, the appointments committee. Um, we're kind of trying something new um, and it's something that I talked to the chair about um, a little bit. We have a tendency in appointments to um, automatically move people up the, the chain as um, people file out. And sometimes we get candidates with applications that might be a better fit than the people 
unfortunately, that we're kind of down the chain. And it seems like the fair thing to do is to just move those people up, but we have to actually be thinking about what is the right thing for Scarborough? What's the best thing for those committees? And so what we've decided to start doing is when we have applications that look like they're very promising, we're going to start holding some interviews and actually talking to those people. We're going to start talking more to the chairs of those people, um, of those groups, and making sure that we're getting accurate, accurate input on those committees because we don't always attend, attend all those committees, so we don't, we're not really sure who's being active, who's not being active. And a lot of times the chairs don't get back to us saying this person really isn't participating, so we wouldn't have that information. So that actually has started, um, and we have um, hopefully are going to start meeting with people next week. So the emails have gone out. Um, so I just want to make everybody aware of that. Um, I also um, went to a uh, to, um, pest management meeting today as a citizen, not as a council member, um, and I made that very clear when I went in there. Um, and it was funny because I went in and said, I'm not here to say anything. I'm, I just want to know what the deal is because there's so much talk going on in Portland and South Portland with everything that they've done. And we're, I don't know if anyone else is, but I'm getting questions about, well, what's Scarborough going to do? Are you guys going to do anything? And um, I was actually really happy to be there because they asked me a lot of questions. Um, and I wanted to touch base with both um, Councillor Katarina and Councillor Baybine um, for two things. One, they're hoping to do a booth also at the mm -hmm. voting, which I thought was a great idea because it kind of gets their message mm -hmm. out a little clearer to people. They've got a great signage that's just not being used. Um, and they want to do some literature. Mm -hmm. And it was almost like copy of literature that like we want to do. So I said, why don't we just sort of put them together? and we're, we're giving out the same information. So I'm going to get that information and then maybe you and I can chat about that. And then also, um, Councillor Babine, one thing that we talked about was, um, you know, when they submit their budget, they pretty much submit like a line item, just a basic line item, what their numbers are, and then we basically only see that they're climbing. And so sometimes we get some feedback from people, or at least I did this year, um, why is organics always going up? You know, is this really working? Do they need more and more every year to accomplish what they're doing? And it was really great to hear them explain, you know, what it is that they're doing um, and how well it's some of the things they're doing. Um, and there's an actual breakdown, a, a much clearer breakdown that they don't submit to you. But I just sort of mentioned it might be a good idea for them to do that. So they're going to be in touch with you um, and see, you know, how you would like to have that prepared and how it, it would be best explained um, for your committee and your group. So actually, it was, a, it, was it ended up working out really well, um, and they're a really great group of people. I mean, they're so dedicated um, to what they're doing. And the other thing too, and Tom and Bill had both told me this when I first brought this up, that group is a very well mixed group. It's not just people who are steadfast on organics. It's also people that are like, no, we do have to use other things besides organics. And that was a great piece was to see how well balanced that committee was. So you guys did a great job on whoever, you know, put that committee together, did a really good job on that. So I was really impressed with them. Um, so yeah, that's it for me. Thank you. For those who are not familiar with uh, the policy that the town has adopted uh, to uh, uh, focus on a more organic approach to town properties. It began in May of 2012. We have been collecting data, uh, both on the cost and the uh, scientific data on soils since that time. Uh, it was always intended that three to five years would go by so <coughs> as to allow a proper judgment to be made. And it is probably, it may not be my call, but uh, it would seem appropriate in the next year to uh, uh, have workshops with pest management, uh, an education process for ourselves to really judge where are we uh, with it uh, and where do we go from here. And they do, um, they are publicized. I mean, they are, they are on public TV. Mm -hmm. They just tape in the manager's conference room. So if someone wants to watch um, the video from their meetings, you can. And their notes are impeccable. Mm -hmm. They have an incredible note taker. Okay. Um, she's mm -hmm. really on the ball. And her, so if you go back and read, all of her notes are all the way back. Um, I've got notes all the way back from 2010. So they really, like, they're on it. So it's pretty, it was really impressive. So thank you for. Thank, thank you. Yeah. Councilor Bebo. Uh, thanks. Just as a follow up regarding the recommendation, I think that's wonderful. I, I would want to include the manager um, in that because I think it's important. Um, 
one, because it should be part of the budget presentation, maybe as a supplemental piece within the budget. But two, um, there was some conversation at the Finance Committee about this issue and wanting to do some type of analysis regarding where we are today in a cost comparison as, um, versus any alternatives. And that's kind of the information that I think that would support that analysis. So I encourage that um, very much. And they are sitting on soil samples that they're waiting for any day. They're, they're supposed to be here by now. So sure. I think that will help you. But this year's soil yes. samples? Yes. yes. Um, just to, uh, quickly on finance, um, we had our last meeting. Our next meeting is October 12th. Um, our um, items are moving forward. We do have a re very, very rough draft of a fun new fund balance policy. Our goal is to have that submitted to you uh, probably in uh, October, late October, um, at the very latest. Um, the next meeting, if I, if I didn't say it, is October 12th, uh, 6 o'clock here in Chambers. Uh, the library had their meeting. Um, I had to leave early because of another commitment, but I, did, I was able to at least sit through a presentation um, that, um, regarding solar energy um, and the uh, possibility of uh, putting solar panels on the library as part of their existing structure and maybe as well as any new structure going forward. It was a very interesting and very, uh, it was a very good presentation. And I want to, I think the name of the company was, was it Revision? Revision. Revision. Yeah. It was really, really good. And um, you know, if I get her name wrong, I apologize. Is it McDonough? Debbie McDonough? Debbie McDonough. She's just absolutely knowledge, incredible knowledge. Um, and so that was really good. You'll get more information about that later because there may be some uh, action items for us to take into consideration later. EcoMaine has a meeting tomorrow. Um, Bill, I cannot make that. Um, would you be able to do that for me? Well, what time is it? I check with me after I check okay, the calendar. Okay, check with you. Yeah. Um, let's, even though this is not technically, I am have been elected to the Legislative Policy Committee for mm -hmm. MMA now, um, and they did have their first meeting, and we have set five priorities for the year, um, at least for the subcommittee, um, which I'm focusing on, which is primarily around appropriations, taxation, and other f financial affairs, um, which are pretty significant. Uh, their areas of focus, and would love to have your opinions on it regards revenue sharing. <laughs> Um, general property tax relief, uh, which is a very broad statement. Uh, the homestead exemption, county jail funding, um, and tax exempt property. And the reference to tax exempt property is really about um, assessing some type of fee to those properties uh, because they do receive um, some services from the municipality but aren't paying through the property tax. So n nothing has been definitive. And I, just to share, the tone of the committee has been um, more of a um, <coughs> Um, proactive protective mood move to guarantee that at least what we have in place isn't decimated further than it has been over the last uh, six years, uh, six years. Um, so uh, it'll be interesting to see it, how that moves forward and last I did want to thank the county commissioners who were here about a week ago uh, for a county meeting under the new charter uh, when the charter was approved to increase the number of commissioners um, it was also included that they are required to uh, attend, um, to have a meeting in each district. Um, I apologize, I wasn't able to attend, but I know the manager was here to give them a warm welcome. Um, I also serve on the Cumberland County Budget Advisory Committee that's impacted directly by uh, their funding and did want to mention that the preliminary budget, and it's preliminary, is a 6% increase that is directly related to the jail funding or lack thereof, which ties in perfectly to the priorities of MMA. Uh, because uh, funding is expected to decrease again. <laughs> and that's all I have. Thank you. Councilor Rowan. Uh, thank you. Uh, Scarborough Housing Alliance met um, in attendance uh, were Carrie and Rhonda Anderson as well as Dan Bacon. Um, we were able to advance to the planning board some recommendations around um, <coughs> how rental properties, um, when, when rental properties are being used for the uh, affordable housing density bonus, um, uh, the, um, how those should be handled and what kind of guidelines those could be run under. So um, that's going to go for the planning board or the um, uh, Carrie and Rhonda are going to be in front of the planning board later in October and this will we'll be able to accompany them for their next phase uh, over at Eastern Village. Um, we also had Dan Bacon in attendance and he kind of started talking about the comprehensive plan updates and as it applies to affordable housing. Um, Senco also met. Um, they, uh, they have their annual meeting coming up in um, two weeks from last night. Um, the, so a lot of planning, a lot of time was spent kind of planning around uh, <coughs> the annual meeting, 
Um, I'm not going to be able to be in Hennis. I'm going to be out that week. Um, so I believe that, um, Bill, they reached out to you about perhaps doing the introduction. I don't know if you... Yes, they did. No, I told them I'm happy to do so. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, and then we also talked about um, uh, a number of updates, including Haggis Parkway, and uh, everyone was amenable to keeping the name as is, uh, <laughs> and didn't have any intention of actually changing it uh, of the name of the road itself. It was, <laughs> but there was discussion about that a rebranding of, of um, the gateway is, is probably necessary, yeah. um, certainly to get the idea out of the kind of outdated office park. Um, that's all. Thank you. Councilor Katerina. Uh, yeah, um, leading right into the rebranding of Highest Parkway. No, <laughs> Long Range <laughs> Planning also discussed that uh, briefly <laughs> because people were concerned about getting away from that name. Um, our last meeting was on Friday, September 9th. Um, we reviewed a rezoning request that Respiro Properties has brought up for, um, it's a lot, a couple of lots on Muzzy Road. Um, which is near the Eight Corners area where they would like to do some apartments, which actually would be good. Uh, we need more of that, rentals uh, in town. Uh, I did ask him specifically, <coughs> ask him, meaning Mr. Rosbarra, regarding what are we going to do about affordable and senior within it, because it's going to be market rate housing. So I did broach that with them. Um, and they're just looking to make the lots TVC3 because one of them is B3, but it's really basically unusable as B3 because of wetlands and et cetera, et cetera. So it made sense to long range planning. So we will be seeing this coming forward probably. I'm looking at October 19th. Yeah, okay. One of the things you asked them to do was to do some neighborhood outreach. Right. So that will give them time right. to accomplish that. Right. And then um, we also talked about uh, Haggis Parkway and the multifamily because we'd like to see some mixed use as part of this rebranding and uh, getting a, a, a different feel to the parkway there. Uh, and also comprehensive plan process update we didn't really talk much about because we had talked so much about the other things. But it is, you know, people are working on it and I've noticed that other towns have been actively w recruiting. I know Gorham's been actively recruiting for people to serve on comprehensive plans. So uh, hopefully, you know, we, we will be there uh, shortly. Uh, ordinance committee, um, as you saw, we passed the uh, blasting ordinance. That was big, because we didn't have one, so that was good. And then we've had a couple of uh, minor changes to some parking, one of which had to do with the uh, Methodist Church on Route 1, just making it easier to reconfigure a bit. And we will be going to the neighbors just to make sure they're on board and understand what's going on. Um, and it will, again, we'll be coming to the council. Uh, and last but not least is conservation. I was not able to make their last meeting because of the um, land trust dinner. Um, they are work, continuing to work on uh, what are the contingency plans for this town long range for sea level rise. And they have come up with a questionnaire and they have set a meeting with Mike Shaw. They're going to start with Mike um, coming up. I don't have the dates though because I forgot to look on the, <laughs> on the paperwork they sent me. But uh, that's where we're at with those committees. Thank you. Town manager's report. Yes, thank you. Um, as you all just heard, uh, it's been a busy two weeks. I think uh, we all took the summer off. Yeah. I myself, just since the council met last, attended Scarborough Hous Housing Alliance, Finance, yeah. Rules and Policies, SEDCO, Ordinance, and Energy. So <laughs> um, it's just a, a fair amount of time just prepping for those meetings, attending them, and then you know, cleaning up after them on, on occasion. Uh, <laughs> but good, I, I really feel as though we're, we're advancing a lot of things. Every one of those committees is actually yeah. making things happen, which really feels good. Um, first, I just want to address the Martin's point. Uh, the council held a workshop and passed in first reading, uh, supporting them for their uh, application to the Finance Authority of Maine through a municipal securities program. Uh, they had uh, they've reevaluated re their options and have chosen to withdraw their request, and that's why it's not on your agenda and it will never come back. Uh, the good news is they really uh, the path they're taking they prefer. It's actually um, better financially for them. It's going to be easier, and I think it might mm -hmm. uh, serve our purpose too. Uh, there were a lot of questions, good questions, and I, I do have to share with you. I walked out of the meeting with uh, Attorney Garcia um, that evening and. He paid a high compliment to you as a, as a body. He said in his 40 years doing this work, he's never had such a thorough, 
conversation and inquisitive bunch of elected officials. So uh, you should feel proud. And there certainly was no offense taken by the, the level of questions. In fact, uh, they were quite impressed. So um, we're pleased that they're moving ahead, and, and uh, we don't necessarily have to be part of that. Also, uh, I'm pleased to announce we, I've hired a new assistant town manager. Her name is Larissa Crockett. She's scheduled to start October 3rd. Uh, Larissa comes to us uh, in a bit of a circuitous route in that she's had nine plus years of public experience, but not as an appointed official, as an elected official. She has served the town of uh, Acton in many capacities um, as selectman, but she's also been there uh, elected as their um, to draft their town warrant and finance mm -hmm. committee, which is a big deal in a small mm -hmm. town. Right. And if any of you appreciate small yeah. towns in Maine, uh, the selectmen really are the ones that do the work. Mm -hmm. uh, so she's um, been heavily involved in all aspects municipal. This is at a larger scale and maybe a little uh, different sort of issues, but she's well healed uh, yeah. in all these issues. Uh, Councillor Babemine, you might be interested to know, she served as Acton's representative of the LPC. I so saw that. Involved in <laughs> I looked it up on LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but m most recently, she has an economics degree from UNH uh, initially, and then most recently a master's degree from the Muskie School. Oh, and um, hopefully, she <clears throat> believed this, she said she wants to make this her profession. So this will be a good first opportunity <laughs> for her. Um, <laughs> and I do expect to have her at the October 5th meeting, so it will be a good opportunity for okay. both of you. <laughs> I'll try not to. Uh, on the sustainability coordinator, we have completed first round interviews. We had 55 applicants, uh, really far exceeded our expectations. Um, because the assistant town manager will, will be the supervisor of this position, we're going to bring her in to be part of the second interviews, mm -hmm. and those are scheduled for next Thursday. So we now have three candidates. Uh, we're actually going to give them some a little bit of homework uh, for comparative purposes, right. and we might actually be able to benefit from it. Uh, the Energy Committee is looking at revamping the energy plan, yep. and we're going to look for them to do some critique, if you will, of the existing one and do a quick presentation on it. So we're excited about everything's moving as planned. Can I ask you a quick question about Certainly. that, Tom? Sorry to interrupt you. No, please. Um, I had a question today. Um, is there a list somewhere um, of what that position, um, I, c I couldn't find it anymore, of what that position, um, you know, um, entails. Sure. So, yeah. um, I've got a narrative, narrative description in the budget, and we now have a full, fully developed job description. Is that on their website? Um, certainly the narrative is part of the budget. Uh, okay. It's probably you have to hunt for it. I'll, okay. I'll be pleased to Yeah, if you could just and then I'll it forward you. it on to him. Please. Great. Yeah, I'll be happy to. Sorry to interrupt you. No worries. Um, we're very busy on the Eastern Trail fundraising. Councilor Hayes is kind enough to volunteer some time in that uh, in that cause. We have a number of large requests out we're still waiting to hear back on. Mm -hmm. We had a very successful meeting with Town and Country Federal Credit Union last week. Okay. It looks extremely promising for a sizable donation and also their help in organizi organizing a, it's a fundraising event, but it's really raising awareness event. And one of the great things they have is a huge footprint in Scarborough and yeah. South Portland. Uh, their membership is uh, terrific and they as a company are terrific at, at mm -hmm. event planning. So yeah. we're very pleased that they're willing to put some time and effort toward that. Very generous. And lastly, I just want to mention I'll be heading to the International City Managers Association Conference in Kansas City, sunny Kansas City. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, exciting. Over the weekend, uh, I'll be there uh, flying back on Tuesday. So I'll be back in the office uh, Wednesday morning. Okay. And I'll give you a report when I come back. Let us know how the barbecue is. <laughs> I certainly will. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, this morning, uh, I joined Councillor Cazo in the Energy Committee because we we're talking about this pilot program, which uh, I think uh, we as an Energy Committee have spent a lot of time trying to find better ways to uh, uh, deal with our compost, and, and that, of course, deals with it. But what was interesting about the meeting was on several occasions, it was obvious how valuable a sustainability coordinator will be to carry on the kind of analysis that's necessary to do our work effectively. So it was very nice to, to see that. Part, part of the challenge will be to, uh, I don't want to have her or him drinking through a fire. <coughs> There's a lot of pent up interest and demand and work. So we'll have to be careful how we kind of meter that out and prioritize it, but uh, you're exactly right. Uh, council member comments. Let's start down here with Council Bailey. 
Sure, there are only 94 days, 4 hours, and 19 minutes until Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I have for tonight. Well, thank you. That was Actually, very brief. Have but have let's turn you on. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, follow that one. So, <laughs> um, so I've been very good this year. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, while you're making your shopping list, um, I, um, I just want I am going to be out that first week in October, and I just wanted to uh, let you know that I won't be at the at the meeting. I'm going to be out of town, um, and that's that's actually all I have for comments. Councilor Kenry. I have a comment about uh, Councilor Baybine. Today's his birthday, and I think he's 39, 39 for I don't know how many times. But <laughs> happy birthday, Councilor Baybine! Yeah, happy birthday! Happy birthday! <laughs> <laughs> it's your birthday. Wow. Happy that's birthday. it. That's it for my comment. Oh. Yeah. Should we sing? You do, and I'm going <laughs> to. Please no. Make sure Santa Claus really well. doesn't leave you anything. Let's start <laughs> out here at the far end with Councilor Kaysa. So three quick things. Um, on Monday, uh, there was an incident up on Burnham Road, so I just wanted to thank uh, oh, the school yes. bus. Uh, oh, I just yeah. wanted to thank the emergency services from, uh, from Scarborough for responding so quickly. Uh, there was a power line uh, that had um, come down on a school bus. Uh, police, fire, and rescue responded very quickly, as did CMP. Um, but I did want to give a special shout out to the bus driver, Carl, yeah. who's getting a lot of accolades yeah. in town and well deserved mm -hmm. for staying calm and collected and yeah. uh, entertaining the kids while uh, all the fiasco was going on around them. So everybody was safe, uh, it kept them entertained and engaged until it was all clear for them to leave. So I definitely wanted to give him a shout out. Um, second thing is uh, Scarborough Education Foundation's fifth annual Harvest Fest celebration is coming up. Saturday, October 15th, 6.30 at Bailey's Campground. Uh, that is a private fundraiser. Um, it's very well attended, and I'm not sure who the entertainment's going to be, but uh, tickets are certainly available through their website. And before that, however, is Scarborough Education Foundation Night at Portland Pie in Scarborough on Wednesday, October 5th. Uh, there's a voucher on their website. You have to print that out and bring it in, but if you show up, 10% of your bill gets donated to the Scarborough Education Foundation. So they certainly could use the resources mm -hmm. and the revenue. And if anybody out there can participate, uh, that would be greatly appreciated. Uh, can I ask yeah. a yes. quick question? Go right ahead. I'm sorry. Um, are they still accepting donations for the silent auction? Do you know? I know I'm giving something, so I didn't I don't know for you. sure, okay. but um, if you're interested, I, I doubt very much that they would refuse anything at yeah. this point. <laughs> <laughs> I know that would help them raise some money. Sure, I don't Anyone know when the cutoff is, but... Anyone else something that they want to do. And this is for the... Uh, education. Scarborough Education, Scarborough education Foundation, Foundation, which is the, the uh, independent private... Uh, if you, if I'd like to have information on the uh, any uh, donation of for the silent auction. Okay. I'll, I'll definitely reach out and get that for you guys. They donate a lot of stuff to classroom teachers. And Tons of stuff. Yeah. Councilor yeah. Hayes. Yeah, I, I, actually, Sean, you kind of threw a curveball a little bit. And we, we had the countdown. <laughs> I, thought, I thought you were talking about the countdown of elections. So, I've got to, <laughs> uh, so, that, so, that, so that's sort of my point. And actually, you know, probably everybody's been watching, and there's just been lots of conversations about the media and coverage of elections. And I tell you, the, the, the questions that are on our ballot this year for Maine, boy, I tell you, when you listen to both sides mm. of the discussion, they are completely different stories. So I'm just encouraged. I'm really confused by some of the issues. Yeah. So I'm just encouraging everybody, before you, you get to the polls, take some time, read both sides of the issue, and then try to decide what you think the right thing is. Because there, there are some really loaded questions on the ballot that can have big impact. So that's sort of just my mm. observation, I guess. But if they're fairly tricky to understand. There seems to be pros and cons to almost every single one. Mm. Thank you. Councilor St. Clair. Um, uh, I just, two things. One, um, on a personal note, I hope this is okay to say, but um, uh, on Saturday, October um, 8th, is the fourth annual um, Team Kyle 5K in memory of my son. Um, it's a really fun day. Um, there's a ton, lots, we get lots of families. And it's a great event for kids. Um, it doesn't have to be run. We have strollers and walkers and, you know, runners. <coughs> and um, it's a, We have some really great um, uh, auction items this year. Um, and so I would just, you know, encourage anybody that would like to have participate. Um, we'll take, um, we'll take people up until that day. So um, the more the merrier. I think right now we have about 
220 registered runners. So, and usually we get about 100 more before the actual race. So we have anywhere between three and 400 runners. So it's really a fun day. Um, we have live music and face painting and balloons and all that good stuff. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to just um, say is to um, vote, please vote. Um, we have um, some really important local issues and local races that are really important to our council um, and to our state. And I know that there's been, you know, there has been some talk out there of people who are saying, oh, I'm not going to vote because of the presidential piece of it. But that's not the only thing on the ballot. We have other things on the ballot that are really important, um, and they, have, they affect your town and, and the people around you. And so it's really important to do your homework and, and get out and vote. And it only takes a few minutes. And especially um, people that have children, it's always a great experience to bring your kids to the booths. I mean, every right. time I bring my kids, they have lots of questions, and I feel like it's like teaching them early how critical it is and how lucky we are and how many people sacrifice their lives for us to be able to have an honor to vote. So it's like, if you don't vote, I don't want to hear you in November, <laughs> at the end of November. I don't want to hear any complaints from you if you don't get to the polls <laughs> because you have no excuse. Our, our pool people work hard. They put in a long day, um, and there's absolutely no reason why anyone can't vote. There are absentee ballots. Now I think Tody said she's had over 200 requests oh, well. for absentee <laughs> ballots, which is amazing to me, um, which shows me that maybe Scarborough is going to have a great turnout, um, which would be a wonderful thing. So um, I encourage you to vote. And I know that um, Councilor Katarina and I are going to be hopefully working um, on putting a table together um, mm -hmm. with the approval of the chair um, that'd be great. for the yeah. council table um, with just some I local information on it. Um, and are always have our clink bags and things like that. So that's kind of exciting. Um, so I just that's it for me. Thank you. Uh, you know, mindful on election day, as Councillor Hayes pointed out, there are some really important uh, issues that are being presented. Uh, yesterday, uh, com the town manager and I met with our town council and the planning director because we are mindful of the fact that there is a recreational marijuana uh, referendum yeah. uh, matter on it. And we began the process of making sure that the town of Scarborough is going to be ready for any zoning issues that might be involved. We want to make sure, but we're not going to anticipate uh, the outcome. We'll simply wait until uh, after November 8th. But that would be something that would uh, be brought to the full attention of this board uh, for action uh, uh, to whatever degree is necessary. Uh, I think uh, we have uh, reached the point where our early voting is uh, so active that we are going to take over uh, uh, <laughs> this area uh, for the month of October uh, uh, for the most part. Uh, and as a consequence, uh, we are going to hold our next town council meeting on October the 5th at the Wentworth School. Oh, okay. And uh, I had the pleasure of getting to know Kelly Crosby when we both served together on the uh, search committee for the new superintendent. Uh, and we started talking, this was many months ago, about how what a great facility Wentworth School is and how many people in the community just through happenstance don't get the opportunity to see what a great facility it is. So we said, let's hold something in the fall. And now that we are displaced from our regular digs, we are going to have October 5th, we will be at Wentworth School. The town manager has made sure that we have the technical ability to televise live. Uh, uh, the school is excited about it. That's a third, fourth, and fifth grade. We are going to have perhaps about an hour before the meeting, we're going to have uh, students giving tours. Uh, we'll have a video that will uh, have been prepared by the school people. Uh, uh, and it should just be an exciting, fun time held in their library. Uh, and uh, uh, we're, uh, we're very excited about uh, uh, having that as our next uh, meeting place. So. Uh, awesome. That's I think uh, concludes it. I'll accept the motion to Oop. adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Opposed. We are adjourned. Thank you.